in today's world of astrology where people are predicting are you lazy or not my endeavor have been to teach the true knowledge to people who are in search of knowledge to do it i have tried giving those knowledge those chunks of knowledge those researches those techniques on my channel which really helps you predict in this multiple times we have talked about the partial aspect of planets one third aspect half aspect three fourth aspect and full aspect that every planet have but talking in reality are they are these aspects used in day to day astrology practice they are used to make hypothetical conjunction which i must have talked about in my videos and i have talked about many times in my courses also but other than that what is the most important uses of that technique is what i am going to tell you today and this is not only a uses of that technique but in fact this is the most important principle in horoscope analysis which if not considered create major flaws in the analysis of horoscope first and the foremost point is that every factor in astrology work according to the strength for example take a planet sun sun is the significator for power authority if sun is powerful one will be powerful and authoritative if sun is weak one will not be powerful and authoritative now this strength of sun can be known through multiple factors specifically shadbal shadbal tells you whether sun is powerful or not if sun is having minimum 100% of strength in shadbal person is powerful and he have name fame status authority power like a normal person have the more powerful sun becomes more name fame status and authority one will have and if sun is less than 100% powerful then the power authority is less as compared to what a normal people should normal person should possess now this shadbal is not extensive so many a times it can happen that a planet is weak in shadbal but because he is in his own rashi exalted in his mula trigona sign or vargottam same sign in rashi and navamsha where the planet gets a sthanbal despite the fact or digvali directional strength house sun and mars in the 10th house jupiter and mercury in the ascendant moon venus in the 4th house saturn in the 7th house if the planet is digvali then despite the fact that the planet may have less than 100% of point in shadbal the planet should be taken as powerful and whatever the planet signifies that the native enjoys not only this you say if sun becomes the lord of the 9th house and he is more than 100% powerful in shadbal one is lucky the more powerful sun is as 9th lord more lucky one is and if the sun is weak having less than 100% point in shadbal then in that particular scenario person is not that lucky not having that bare minimum luck which everyone should have to succeed in today's competitive world in this particular scenario many a times what what you find that though the ninth lord is not very powerful otherwise looking but when you look at the planet in shadbal it becomes the most powerful planet making the person very fortunate this also happens so the normal strength of planet exaltation so rashi mulu trikon vargottam you have to first check and if the planet is not getting strength this way or if the strength of the two planets seems to be equal when you are comparing for example you will generally compare the lagna lord and the sixth lord if the lagna lord is more powerful one lives a healthy life if the sixth lord is more powerful one lives a diseased life in this scenario say both lagna lord and sixth lord are in their own houses lagna lord is in lagna sixth lord is in sixth house then how to decide whether one will live mostly healthy or mostly diseased so for that you will use shadbal to quantify how much powerful the lagna lord is or how much powerful the sixth lord so when the planet is not getting a particular type of sthanbal which makes him a clear winner you go to shadbal or in comparison between two planets of equal strength you go to shadbal but it is not ultimate it is not it is not the most ultimate thing 
and there are other factors regarding the strength of the planet also that should be considered such as ashtavarga etc but planet is not my topic for today my topic for today is house more important than planet is house it is told in astrology it, by our ancient sages that without the analysis of houses in horoscope it is difficult to take even one step in astrology towards prediction so prediction with help of significator that venus is the significator of marriage and what whatever is happening to venus that same things will happen in marriage is a scanty analysis though it works but it is an additional factor not a decisive factor to decisively decide about marriage one will have to take into consideration the seventh house predictive astrology natal predictive astrology personal predictive astrology predicting on the horoscopes of people which is known as hora you should remember that hora is also a synonym for our hora is also a divisional chart what is known as d2 and hora is also synonym of lagna ascendant so without the consideration of ascendant it cannot be called as jatak it cannot be called as hora it cannot be called as personal astrology and once you start considering the ascendant the ascendant decides the rashi is in different houses so basically the analysis of house is backbone of astrology and without analysis of house no prediction can be made no prediction should be made any prediction made without proper analysis of houses using factors such as significators only always stand at the verge of 50% success 50% failure it is a hit or miss case so house analysis becomes very important now in this house analysis the most important part is the strength of house for example let's take the 7th house so basically every person gets married okay. one may choose to not get married that's another point this is all dependent on choice and choices are based on yogas planetary combinations so one may choose to get married or one may not choose to get married that is all okay getting married is happiness of marriage wishing not to get marriage is renouncing the happiness of marriage but here it is not in availability of marriage but in some cases what may happen that the person may desire to get married but he will not find a suitable relationship or he will not able to enjoy the happiness of association happiness of relationship even once in life this happens because a house is weak so normally considering if a house is powerful standard strength i am talking of standard strength if the house is having standard strength then person is having what is a standard so seventh house is having a standard strength i will explain what is standard strength seventh house is having a standard strength that means person will have a wife he will enjoy with that wife if the house have more strength then in that particular scenario one may have multiple wives or multiple relationships one can enjoy with multiple men and women however if the house have less strength then the enjoyment is also less for example seventh house have 100% strength one will have a wife one will have children from that wife enjoyment of marriage seventh house is having 75% influence only in 75% power only in that scenario one will have a wife enjoy with wife but no child or one will have a wife will have child from the wife but no enjoyment of marriage the third case is only 50% strength in that scenario one have a wife neither enjoys nor have child but have a wife the third case is seventh house having 25% strength in that particular scenario one only have a wife and that relationship is also not very good so rather than enjoyment happening there are troubles coming from marriage only but at least wife is there acquaintance is there relationship is there and whatever carnal enjoyment is there one enjoys that when the seventh house is having 0% strength in that particular scenario one cannot enjoy companionship at all ever in life so the differentiation of the same is very necessary for with respect to all the 12 houses which needs to be done for an example take fourth house Fourth house having hundred percent strength makes the person go on a normal category where we believe that every person have a home, have a car. 
if it is having 75% strength then in that scenario one will have a home and have a car but he will have to share it with others in the case of 50% strength one will only have happiness of car or only have happiness of vehicle not of both in the third case of 25% strength one will either have home or either have car in that scenario also he will not enjoy he will have to share it with others and this will be problems and tensions in the enjoyment also even the sustenance of the home and property making sure that you live here without any problem you are not thrown out of the house or you are not restricted from using the vehicle is also dubious in the case where fourth house is having 0% of strength in that particular scenario securing a home securing a house is very difficult and one have to be dean one have to beg to others ask to others to use their home and use their vehicle which they seldom give to the native after repeated request and in that scenario even if he get after re repeated request he cannot enjoy it fully because he know he always goes he always lives in a fear that if something bad happens i will not be able to repay it right so this is the basic point now to decide the strength of the house in which category it is falling many principles are not there when you talk of schedule in schedule there is something known as bhavbal but if you look at the calculation of bhavbal it is it looks like that it is done in hurry the bhavbal that comes from schedule is not at all dependable neither it is the way told by our sages to see the strength or weakness of house whoever introduced this principle i am not taking the name it is an ancient astrologer from 12th 13th century he is highly criticized by all other astrologers after him because of introducing this particular thing the house strength principle however going by the classical method of our sages and relying on the most authoritative texts there is only one principle of house strength and that principle is so universal so well accepted it is well accepted because it works in practice you say parashar did astrology for some 200 300 years he found a principle he wrote it after parashar came some other astrologer he also practiced that principle throughout his life found it working in experience he also talked about it so this principle is so brilliant so extensive so good that in all systems gemini system parashar system this principle is the same the principle is any house getting the aspect of jupiter mercury or sign lord or any house where jupiter mercury or the lord of the sign under consideration is situated in the house that rashi is 100% power okay now when you go to a horoscope jupiter will be situated in one house he will be expecting three houses four house in total mercury will be situated in one house he will be expecting one house two more houses six houses in total except for these six houses for the remaining houses to be powerful the lord of the house should be connected to the house which is rarely the case generally in horoscope one or two house lord will be connected to that particular house making the total number to 8 so maximum in eight houses the house lord will be connected to that particular house that's all now in this particular scenario also differentiation can be made jupiter mercury or sign lord influencing the house by aspect or by conjunction gives strength to that house one enjoys things related to that house in that particular scenario here we are not considering jupiter is the lord of the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house or mercury is the lord of the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house does not matter just the influence of these planets is enough without any other condition now in this particular case when jupiter or mercury is influencing one particular house they indicate enjoyment related to that house that basically means only those can enjoy the bliss of marriage who have either mercury or jupiter connected to their seventh house see i am not talking of seventh lord to seventh house situated in seventh house aspecting seventh house only they can enjoy the real bliss of marriage others cannot here it is about enjoyment the lord on the other hand works as protection lord of the house is like owner of the house jupiter is like someone who may want good for the house or good for the land owner 
now the lord of the house also protects the house so in any situation say in any type of marriage there will be ups and downs there can be fights there can be disagreements this is everywhere but jupiter and mercury only influencing the seventh house it does indicate that there is enjoyment from marriage one enjoys with their life partner but still ups and downs fights disagreements can make make or break the marriage it can be there protection of the lord is needed when the lord is connected to the house in that particular scenario it makes sure <clears throat> it makes sure that despite all of these ups and downs disagreements fights also the relationship sustains so there are two things one between mercury or jupiter and lord two of them Mer mercury and lord jupiter and lord are connected to the house there is a lot of enjoyment also good sustenance also this indicates that you have this thing for a lifetime and you will have full enjoyment no matter how many bad karmas this person will do he will keep on enjoying it no issues at all another thing what can happen jupiter is aspecting his own sign in that scenario what is happening jupiter is also working as a jupiter jupiter is also working as a sign lord so in that scenario enjoyment is also there sustenance is also there no matter one is doing good karma bad karma one is focused about it negligent about it does not matter the enjoyment is there the sustenance is there in this complete stuff sustenance is the major part about which i am talking right now ups and downs problems are a part of life but sustenance have to be there until and unless sustenance is there if the things are not getting sustained in that particular scenario what may happen you say jupiter is influencing the seventh house whereas seventh lord is not able to protect the seventh house then because of jupiter one will enjoy the bliss of marriage but that enjoyment depending on the strength of jupiter if jupiter is weak that enjoyment can be for a brief period of 5 to 10 years only after that 5 to 10 years because the lord is not protecting it the marriage may break and for the remaining part of the life the person may get difficulty being in relationship or enjoying relationship getting relationship so the enjoyment can be there but it will be for brief period on the other hand jupiter can be powerful and influenced by the influencing the seventh house in that scenario what will happen much enjoyment will be there but until and unless lord protects the house it does not ensure that the marriage is protected and in this particular scenario where jupiter is connected to the seventh house which indicates enjoyment of marriage but lord is not supporting it what can happen that person may get enjoyment of marriage but the life partner will keep on changing the marriage will keep on uh, you know the marriage will keep on getting destroyed and there will be problems so the basic point is that the protection of the lord protection of the lord of the sign is very important and to see how much protection the lord is putting to the house partial aspects are used either 100% protection is there in which scenario you will keep on enjoying the good result no matter what no matter how bad you behave no matter how bad you do does not matter you will keep on enjoying it 100% in 75% influence you will be enjoying it for the maximum portion of your life in this case what happens person keeps on enjoying the bliss of marriage right from the time of marriage which happens early up to long old age you say up to the age of 70 75 after which even the death of the partner does not make much difference if the house is protected only 50% in that scenario one enjoys the bliss only till the time the behavior of the person is good if the person starts behaving bad or starts neglecting the relationship the enjoyment may perish also in that particular scenario when the enjoyment is 25% only in that scenario it should be understood as one enjoys the bliss of marriage from the time of getting married up to the time of childbirth so what happens you are enjoying marriage right from marriage to the result of marriage childbirth and after that enjoyment may not be there the sustenance may perish so either the husband or wife may separate or there can be a physical mental barrier between them they can be upset from each other and can spend the rest of their lives in an upset position 
and in the case of no support the sustenance of the relationship itself is very difficult and things may not sustain there can be problem related this is how basically this should be understood and i have told it with respect to the seventh house regarding other houses you can easily understand for example fourth house 100% 100% protection of lord is there one will enjoy the enjoy his own home and his personal vehicle for the lifetime 75% influence from the age of 25 up to the age of 80 one enjoys their own home and own vehicle 50% influence from the age of 27 28 up to the age of 50 55 60 one enjoys their own home and their own property only 25% influence in that scenario after the age of 40 45 one starts enjoying vehicle and property and keep on enjoying it until they die or up to the age of 80 85 zero protection in that particular scenario one may get a property one may get a vehicle but they will be able to enjoy it for long is dubious generally in such cases one will purchase a home will live in that home for 2 3 years but because of inability to pay the loan or anything as such the home will be snatched away from them causing financial losses also loss of properties in this particular way this should be understood now the partial aspect of planet should be taken so we understand every planet have 100% aspect on the seventh house from their position so first of all the planet is placed in a house 100% influence on that house planet is aspecting the seventh house from its position 100% aspect on that particular house that is there now after this this is mars who who have 100% influence on fourth house also eighth house also so that is there other planets on the fourth house and eighth house have 75% influence other planets including saturn and jupiter jupiter is having 100% influence on fifth house and ninth house also planets other than jupiter are having 50% influence on fifth house and ninth house. and lastly saturn is having 100% influence on third house and 10th house and other planets are having only 25% influence on third house and 10th house and in any condition no planet except for rahu but rahu will not become lord of a house so leave rahu no planet is having any percentage of influence to the second house 12th house 11th house and 6th house keeping that in mind how much a house is protected should be carefully judged for a horoscope and predictions should be made carefully if one really wants to make good predictions i will give you a quick example for easy understand for example take this horoscope take it as a standard example now what you see protection only i am counting protection only jupiter is the lagna lord it is in the fourth house so lagna is 10th house from jupiter 10th house 75% influence so 75% protection to ascendant ascendant indicates health so for 75% of life person will be healthy second house lord is saturn saturn is in third house so second house is 12th house from saturn 0% protection to the second house so the happiness of family person living with family getting support from family having savings are not not protected at all that means the person will constantly keep on losing their savings will not be able to save much and the family will not be able to help him much third house because saturn is situated there is having 100% protection that means help from siblings support from siblings will be there person will be valerous and his valor his idea his hard work will be helping him throughout his life and whenever he does hard work in some area he is guaranteed to succeed for this particular reason i take third house as a very important house because it indicates hard work one is not hard working not getting the result that you can understand one is doing a lot of hard work but still not getting result this happens because of a weak or bad third house which becomes really problematic so for this particular reason third house is very important according to me fourth house is having fourth lord itself 100% influence that means happiness of property happiness of vehicle the person will enjoy throughout life 
fifth house is 11th house from the fifth lot it is having 0% protection that means whether the person will have a child or not is not guaranteed whether the person will complete his education or not is not guaranteed whether the person will be able to use his ideas and turn his ideas into reality is not sure at all. The sixth Lord is 12th from the sixth house. So from Venus, his own house is second house, which gives 0% protection. That means because the sixth house is having 0% protection, person will be saved from his enemies is not sure. That means enemies will make much you know, enemies will create much issues in his life. Not only this, there will be much competitions. And because sixth house indicates servants also. Servants misbehaving with such person, stealing things with them, etc. will also be common. Now lastly, seventh house. From seventh lot, seventh house is third. That means 25%. So only for 25% of total life. You say, if you say, the person's life is 100 years, 100 year. Then 25% means for 25 years from marriage, he will be enjoying his marriage. Marriage timing you can find. So only for 25 years from marriage, he will be enjoying it. After that, enjoyment will not be there. So either the couple lives as friends only or just to sustain the relationship. Eighth Lord. From 8th Lord, 8th house is 12th house, 0% protection. That means the person will be protected from bad luck. The person will be protected from misfortune. The person will be protected from ups and downs in life is not sure. That means there will be lots of ups and downs, lots of misfortune, lots of cheating from people. Talking of the 9th house, from 9th Lord, 9th house is 6th, no planet, so 0% protect protection. That means help and support of father, finding guru, having spiritual progress is not guaranteed. Protection is not there. That basically means if one gets a guru, if one finds a guru, starts learning from that guru, will he be able to sustain his faith in the guru? Will he be able to get knowledge from the guru? use it, understand his guru and there will be no fights from the guru. He will be obedient to his guru is not sure. Dubious. Talking of the 10th house from 10th Lord, 10th house is 6th house, 0%. That basically means name, fame, status, etc. can be there, but they will not sustain for long. 0% protection also means that though thing can be there, but the enjoyment, either the enjoyment is not there. Or the result is for little time being only. The result will always remain there and one will always enjoy it is not guaranteed. That means because the 10th Lord is putting 0% influence on the 10th house only for a little time frame. There will be name, fame, status, recognition which will be soon lost. 11th Lord is expecting the 11th house 100% influence, 100% protection is there. That means person will always keep on earning money. All his wishes and desires will get fulfilled. Now see, 9th house is having 0% protection. 11th house is having 100% protection. This also tells me that the loss of the father for this person will happen quite early in life. You say before adolescence, before 18 years of age. Where the person is not able to have an actual visual desire. Later part in life, whatever wish and desire he, he is having, all of that will be fulfilled. Constant source of income will be there. And no matter what, whatever the person does in whatever profession he engages into, he will keep on getting income. He will keep on earning money is guaranteed. Sotaka. Talking of 12th house, 12th Lord from 12th Lord, 12th house is 6th house. 0% protection is there. That means the person will enjoy his expenditure. If the person purchases something, he will be able to use it. That thing will be useful to him is not guaranteed. That means the person may think before purchasing something that it will be useful to me, but in reality, it will not be useful to the native. So why I have given you the example so that you understand that the word protection that I'm using here can be used and interpreted in how many ways and while making predictions, how to use this word 
and mold this word with respect to different houses to make predictions. Now, additionally to this, fourth house is having 100% influence. Jupiter is also there. Lots of enjoyment related to fourth house is there. That basically means person will have a home. He will have a big home, luxurious home, palatial home. And in that home enjoyment will be there as in he will have a good lobby, good sitting area where his friends will sit, will talk to him. So there will be enjoyment from that property also. Now you see eighth house is having 0% protection, but it is having the influence of Jupiter. So that basically means though misfortune and ups and downs will be there, but whenever in the ups and downs scenario, it is an up time. At that point of time, the person will enjoy a lot. 12th house is also having 0% of protection. That basically means whether one will enjoy his expenditure. If one have purchased something, will he enjoy it for long? If one have purchased a car, will he be able to enjoy it for 5, 7, 10 years? Is not sure. He will not enjoy it for that long. But for whatever brief time he may enjoy it, there will be a lot of enjoyment. Also, the 10th house is having the aspect of Jupiter. 10th house is having 0% protection. That means whatever name, fame, status the native will have, it will not sustain. But for whatever brief time that name, fame, status he will have, he will enjoy it a lot. Generally, in these cases, when the house is originally having 0% protection, but there is influence of Jupiter, it generally leads to that person got name, fame, and status. But because of his enjoyment tendency that is given, given by Jupiter, he enjoyed it a lot. In fact, misused it. Better word will be misused it, which led him to lose the blessing. This is how I generally interpret it. Right. The same 11th house is 100% protected and there is aspect of Mercury over 11th house also. That means the person will earn a good amount of money and, with, and he will spend that earning a lot also. Now from the analysis of the 12th house, you know that whatever he purchases from that, whatever he purchases from his expenditure, he will not be able to enjoy it for long. But because 11th house is powerful, it does indicate that generally people spend money in those things which does not give much value. Such as spending money in alcohol, spending money in parting, etc. Where you spend money and it is all vanished in one go. You don't have a substantial thing in your hand that you can enjoy. With respect to the fifth house, Mercury is there, but protection is 0%. That means the person will have complete education. The person will have children or not. That is not guaranteed. But because Mercury is there, whatever little bit of primary education that is having, that he is having, whatever level of education that he is having, he will 100% use it. He will 100% use it for his benefit. So generally such people are those who have not learnt much. But because of their experience, because of their first-hand experience, they are able to make a mark in whatever field they engage in and prosper because of that. So in this particular way, this principle should be applied. And if I have to tell you one thing, I will tell you that this principle that I have taught you today is one of my golden principle. I don't analyze a horoscope without this principle and you also don't analyze a horoscope without this principle because anything done without using this principle is 50-50 prediction. It is a hit or miss case. If you want surety in your predictions, if you want to predict with confidence, if you want that your prediction coming true will be your daily habit. If you really want to do astrology the way sages wanted to do, if you want to be confident about your predictions, this is a rule you cannot afford to miss. Right? So understand this properly. Watch the video two, three times to understand it deeper and use it in your practice for sure.